praise you, to honor you. Thank you, dear God, for safety and travel and safety on our highways and for our health. And I pray that you'd bless uh, the people that have been mentioned specifically tonight, Denise Erickson and George Wadsworth and uh, Jack. I pray, Father, that you would reveal your mighty arm on their behalf, touch them, be their physician, put them on their feet to do the things that they need to do and want to do again. Bless us tonight as we study this most incredible revelation in Scripture of what uh, you have built into us. In Jesus' name, amen. Look in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Y'all having a good summer so far? How many, has anybody slept until at least 11.15? You have slept until 11.15? Back up. What's, what's the latest you've slept till? 11.30. Wow. A.M. or P.M.? <laughs> yes, sir. What's the latest you've slept? What time? Wow. All right. All right. Look at Proverbs 29 and verse number 11. You ready? A fool uttereth all his mind. Tell you everything he knows, makes up the rest. He'll tell you everything that he, that he does, that he owns. That he, he'll tell you all that. But a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Now, look at verse number 12. Uh, yeah, if a ruler hearken to lies... All his servants are wicked. Now, look at Proverbs 20 or 13, verse 16. We're just going to read some generalized ideas of what Scripture has to say about this matter of uh, getting angry. Look at 13, verse 16. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge. But a fool layeth open his folly, his ignorance, his stupidity. Look at chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident that he knows everything. He can do everything. He's got all the answers. Verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly and the closest word that i can give you in our language for this word is like an idiot okay a man that is his powder stays he's looking for a reason to blow up he's an idiot and a man of wicked devices is hated all right look at uh verse 29 he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is, of, that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Now, has God given anybody an uncontrollable temper? No. Is there such a thing as an uncontrollable temper? No. Is that's the point okay there's no such thing as an uncontrollable temper there is such a thing as an uncontrolled temper now can a person control the timing the target and the intensity of his anger absolutely you can see there's a control mechanism for everything that god made I'll give you an idea uh, the heat of the sun is controlled. You know, the sun doesn't change in its intensity, right? Same temperature all the time. Then how come sometimes it's cooler here in Florida and sometimes it's just blazing hot? Well, cloud cover. Cloud cover 
is what controls the heat of the sun. Um, fire. Water can control fire. So there's a control there for that. Uh, how about hunger? Hunger can be controlled by food, by eating. Uh, darkness can be controlled with light. So we even have dimmer switches in this auditorium. And we can turn these lights down and we can control less of the light so that more dark is present or we can control the light where there's less darkness present. Um, did you know that foreign invaders in the body can be controlled by fever? You know fever is a good thing if it doesn't get out of control. You don't want a 120 degree temperature. But when the body, especially with the, these young kids, you know, they'll get some new invader that they've never had before and they get the chicken pox or something and, and the body is, the blood is ignorant and doesn't know what to do. And so while it's trying to figure out a, a path of, of uh, uh, protocol here, it does the only thing it knows to do. Let's just turn up the temperature and try to kill this thing. And so you don't necessarily want to break the fever. You, you just want to keep it under control. Um, Many, if not all, diseases can be controlled by agents that God has put in nature. There is a great possibility that cancer is a nutritional disease. Great possibility. Um, we have a high incidence of uh, cancer here in Hardy County. I think there's a reason for that. We spray all kinds of stuff on these groves and, and we inhale it. And so I think we've got cancer producing agents not only in the air but in our water here. But anyway, uh, you know, we picked up on that, this thing of building controls into everything. How many, how many brakes does your car have out here? All right, you got one on each wheel. Do you have an emergency brake? What's that for? To control. All right? You want your car under control. When your brakes go out, you're, you're in some trouble here. Um, how about, do you have on and off switches on your appliances at the house? How about on your tools? Uh, we've got uh, on, on the lights. We turn them on. We can turn them off. Uh, we put bits in the horse's mouths because we want them under control. We... Um, we put rudders in ships so we can control them. The wind doesn't control the direction of a sailboat. The rudder does. Um, we have, oh my goodness, jails. What are jails all about? Trying to control wrong behavior. We have laws. Why don't we have laws? Trying to control people's behavior. Uh, we have um, police that ride our streets and highways for the purpose of controlling behavior. And so everything we buy either starts or stops something. Everything. Detergent, closed detergent. What does that stop? It stops the accumulation of dirt on your clothes. Um, I mean, we got mouthwash. Somebody said, well, halitosis is better than no breath at all, and I suppose there's something to that. But uh, mouthwash stops something, you know, the, the growth of germs and, and everything. Uh, how about paint? Paint stops the, the walls from fading out and, and looking nasty. And uh, how about uh, charcoal? Charcoal starts a fire. So, and so what I'm telling you, we have built into our very civilization controls. I'm glad that planes have controls on them. You can turn left, you can turn right, you can, you can do all kinds of things. So control's a good thing. We like it. Uh, we expect it. Matter of fact, we demand it. We want to know how to turn this on and how to turn that off. How to get this to turn that way and how to get this to turn the other way. And so we're all about control. Now, what about temper? Um, what about this rush of anger that we, that we feel? Does it have a control mechanism? Is there a volume knob? 
is there anything that God has given us to control the speed, the direction, the intensity, the purpose? Is there anything God has given us to control? What if that gets out of control? How about Chernobyl? See, nuclear power is a, it's an incredible force, but when it is out of control, well, you still can't live in that area tonight. And what was that, 25 years ago, 20, 25 years ago? Uh, how about Japan? You know, their uh, water evaporated out of their uh, tanks over there, and, and uh, they had all kinds of problems. And um, so have we disabled the switch in our temper? I think a lot of people have. I think that there are many, many people that have just simply disconnected the volume control on their anger and so when it hits it goes from zero to 120 immediately as a matter of fact doesn't the scripture say he that is slow to wrath what what's this guy doing he's got his volume under control but then there's a guy that is hasty quick rapid immediate he had there's no there's no control on this man's temper at all uh discretion look at proverbs 19 verse number 11 proverbs 19 11 the discretion of a man deferreth his anger and it is his glory to pass over a transgression now discretion because whatever it is it can control anger according to the scripture discretion is the ability to make responsible, wise decisions. So, can you control your anger? Do you choose not to sometimes? Are you selective in your control? Does it depend on the person you're talking to? Can you control it when you're talking to the boss? But when you're talking to the spouse, somehow the the control volume, you know, the, the knob just spins. And, um, you know, somebody that can do something for you, you're, you're in control. Ever seen anybody screaming and hollering, carried on, and then the phone rings? Hello. How are you? Oh, it is. Oh, it's okay. You know, don't tell me that this can't be controlled. It can be controlled. We just choose not to use discretion in this matter. And so apparently... Uh, control of our anger is a decision that we make. Temper is temper control is something that you learn. These kids are learning what to do with anger. How how are they doing that? Well, first of all, they're watching their parents. They're watching to see how we respond to things that disappoint us, hurt us, threaten us. What we do is that's their curriculum. Uh, they're watching other people you know their friends their their teachers their coaches their uh they watch tv you know politicians teach you how to how to handle your uh, your temper and so you train yourself to control your temper and all of its agents and we'll talk about those agents but in just a minute but um anger is moralistic now what i mean by that is this it will help you locate your values what do you get angry about? What just really makes the hair stand up on the back of your head? Uh, anger produces self-insight if you listen to it. All right? Now, what I mean by that is this. What things do you believe are just or unjust? What you think is unjust will make you angry. That gives you a moral framework for your values. Um, Proverb, look at uh, Proverbs fourteen thirty five. Proverbs fourteen thirty five. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. So, does the king moderate his anger to the guy according to this? To the guy who is a wise servant, there is no anger. But to the guy who is 
a fool, the king's wrath comes against him. And so can you control the target of your anger? Well, absolutely. Is there an appropriate target? Absolutely. Is there an appropriate intensity? Absolutely. Is there an appropriate application for anger? Absolutely. It's like a pharmacist. You go get your prescription filled at the drugstore, and he doesn't just say, oh, dee, 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 dee. there you go, you know, take that, I don't know, six, eight times a day. He doesn't do that. He will measure to the grain how much powder's in that capsule or how much liquid's in that bottle, and he will tell you exactly how much you need to take and when. Now, anger can be explosive. It can be like nuclear energy. Uh, or it can be uh, held in, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute as well. <clears throat> Let me give you some scenarios, and you tell me if this stirs any kind of anger in you. A woman's right to have an abortion for any reason, anytime she wants. That angers me. Okay? That tells you where your values are. Um. One of the things that I look for in a, in a political candidate, especially on the national level, tell me what you believe about life, and I will tell you what you believe about just about everything else. Do you value life? If you do not value life, basically, I don't need to hear anything else from you. That's a critical key issue. Um, what about... Um, When gays protest, I saw a, an advertisement today from Target. And in their children's clothing section, they've got the, the rainbow stripes on the little kids' clothes, and they've got rainbows on the hats. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're from little bitty guys. We're starting to train and teach them. Well, we're not starting. We've been doing this for a while. This is normal. This is okay. If you don't agree with this, you're bad. That angers me, you know, that a child is taught that perversion is okay. So what angers you helps locate your moral framework. Um, and so I, I get angry when this is a, it's a self-confirming protest against what offends your moral values. Tell me something that offends you and just that makes you angry. Okay. They did. They did. In that one case, right. Yeah, yeah, sure it was wrong. Pardon? Well, hopefully I'm going to be able to get it back. Uh, pardon? Robert De Niro. He's a hero to, to left-wingers now. I'm, I'm not even going to tell you what he said, but he made a vile, filthy comment on national television. And, uh, yeah, and so that that locates you. Now, I would... If someone said that about Obama, uh, that would be offensive and wrong. It doesn't matter who the target is. Uh, you know, that, that's, just, that's just wrong. Now, uh, people teach themselves how to control their release of anger. You train yourself over the years of watching and learning what works. If I can scream and holler and get mad and get my way then that's good. And there are people that go through life bullying everybody in their way to get what they want. And pretty soon, they don't have any friends, you know, because nobody wants to be treated like that uh, on a regular basis. And anger never creates permanent cooperation from anybody. You know, you have to do it over and over and over. Uh, now, did you know that Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team? And it angered him. But he didn't go out and shoot anybody. All he did 
was direct himself and his energy and his passion toward becoming arguably the best basketball player in the history of the NBA. That's all he did. That's all he did. But he got cut from his high school basketball team. Now, look at the book of Ephesians. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. This is Paul's assessment of this issue. Paul says, be ye angry. Get angry about the right things at the right time, to the right degree, for the right reason. Love bug lands on that wall. I'm not going to hit it with a ball peen hammer. All right? There is such a thing as judicial overkill. That would be stupid. That would be way out of proportion for a love bug. There, there are much calmer methods. You could get him with a paper towel, you, you know. And um, so it, it is an appropriate emotion that requires an appropriate target. But it, the, the target needs to be appropriate at the appropriate time. Uh, anger is God's way of solving problems. All right, now listen to me. Anger makes you do things. Anger will get you off the couch. Anger will make you put your boots on, get out and get after it. Um, now you say, well, anger what what do you normally think of when you think of anger what's your what's the the picture in your mind of somebody that's angry screaming and hollering and cussing and steam blowing out of their ears and and all that kind of stuff did you know that is not the only perspective of anger okay anger can be very calm it can smile at you it can be under control, but anger is productive. Um, so if you, if you throw things and break stuff, and I've seen athletes sling a bat, a strikeout, pop up, whatever, throw that helmet. I've seen football players come off the field after a call that they didn't agree with and slam that helmet on the ground and uh, kick the water cooler over. And, and I've, I've told people for years, sports does not build character. Sports reveals character. Um, it will, all it does is give you an opportunity to, to magnify what you are. And um, so if, if I, you know, if I'm, if I'm angry, you know, a guy that he squeals his tires getting out of the parking lot, uh, he, he says inappropriate things, he gestures inappropriately with his hands, but anger makes you work. Now, that can either be constructive or destructive. So well, who's, whose decision is that? It's mine. Right, I've got this energy. I've got this power. I have this drive, this motivation within me. So I can take fire and either burn your house down with it or grill you a steak. That's up to me. I, I can do that with the same lighter, same exact lighter. I can destroy your house or I can do something beneficial for you. And so anger gives you the energy to either tear down or build up. What do you want to do with it? This is completely up to us. Paul said, be ye angry but sin not see there is an anger that is associated with sin and then there's an anger that is associated with production that's what he's talking about and so he says be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath now there's a there's a medical reason for that as well not only a, a spiritual reason there's a medical reason for that anger releases some very powerful chemicals in your body. That's, that's, it's like nitrous oxide in, a, in an airboat. If you've ever been in an airboat or in a car, um, I had a buddy up in uh, Kissimmee years ago named Charlie Spaller, and we used to go frogging and fishing and, and all kind of stuff on his airboat on Lake Toho up there. And Charlie, he, he, uh, 
he installed a nitrous oxide tank on that thing, and I, I didn't know what nitrous oxide was. And we were out one Friday or Saturday night, and he said, uh, hold on. And I was like, okay. And I held on. And he hit that. You don't do it long. You blow your engine all to pieces, you know, if you run it on nitrous oxide. He hit that nitrous oxide bottle, and I want you to know that engine woke up, and the RPMs doubled, and it just it just blow your hair back. And um, so that's, that's what um, adrenaline will do. And so it gives you energy to get, where did we get this system from? God, yeah, God put this in us. And so we've got to learn how to control this. Um, out of control anger will just absolutely destroy. It damages people. It damages property. It damages relationships. And, but anger under control will solve some great problems. Alexander Bell got tired of running across town to deliver messages. So he invented the telephone. It's a whole lot easier. You know, we've got the, I'm glad somebody said I'm tired of lighting candles to light up this room. And I'm glad that we didn't invent it, but we, we discovered electricity. I'm grateful for that. I'm glad Carl Benz got tired of sidestepping horse poop in the road. And Carl Benz is the guy that invented the automobile. Henry Ford didn't do it. Henry Ford invented the, the assembly line. Ford put them together. Uh, much more efficiently but a guy named Carl Benz in Germany invented the car and he had a little girl and he wanted to honor his little girl with this new invention and her name was Mercedes <laughs> and so he named his automobile after his little girl Mercedes Benz just like uh, Wendy's uh, Dave Thomas named Wendy's after his little girl Wendy Thomas and um, so but, uh, you know, Paul said, be angry, but don't sin in that anger. And you need to know what anger does in you, okay? One of the reasons that we do our temperament study relatively regularly, pretty much annually, we have new people coming in. You need to know, I think there are two things that you have got to know about yourself. I'm not, I'm not just saying this is positive thinking kind of a deal you need to know your temperament type you need to know that you need to know your spiritual gift you need to know that if you don't I think you're just kind of like a ping pong ball in a, in a whirlwind you need to know what your temperament type is so you can identify your strengths and your weaknesses if you don't know what those things are you don't know how to work with them you don't know how to control them you don't know how to uh, moderate those things because your weaknesses are just your strengths carried to extreme so whatever the strength of your temperament type is hit the nitrous oxide bottle on it Woo! What, what would be the what's the strength of a sanguine for instance y'all many of y'all have been through this for a year what's the strength of a sanguine being silly sense of humor uh, hit the nitrous oxide bottle on that what happens Can you believe that? <laughs> that humor and all that kind of, can that be annoying? Ask a melancholy or ask a choleric if being funny all the time is funny all the time. It's, it's definitely not. And so uh, regardless of your temperament type, all right, regardless of how you handle anything, there are two ways to handle anger. Number one is called ventilation. Now this is the volcano guy or gal that everybody within five miles of your house knows you're mad and that's your purpose you want to create an intimidating atmosphere so people will just simply fall in line and so you ventilate you blow up lava the lava of your anger your words uh, I mean there's some people just go nuts uh, I've known people to hit a wall break their hand you know cost them twelve hundred dollars go to the hospital and get it x-rayed and put a uh, and i'm like why would you do that uh, but anyway and so there's ventilation number two there's internalization and internalization is um, instead of blowing up a person shuts up they just clam up they don't say anything they sulk. Uh they they 
simmer. They just steam. Now, neither one of these is biblical. Okay? You know, somebody that says, well, I just want to get it out. Boom. Uh, okay. Then get it out properly. Get it out properly. You want, um, you want your light controlled with the switch, or do you just want electricity running through your house uncontrolled? Well, we, we just want the electricity. You want it controlled. All right? So your anger, it's, it's emotional electricity. We're aware of that. It's power. It is energy. But you want it controlled. You want to be able to direct it toward doing what? Solving problems. Getting things done. Um, so, you know, either one, either the, the ventilator or the internalizer, either one of those can be a school shooter. You understand? The guy that blows up, everybody knows he blows up, he can be a school shooter. And then there's this, most of the time that what I'm hearing, these are the kids that are, they're bullied and they're quiet and they don't say anything and that's why everybody's so shocked. He did that? Yep. Finally, he just snapped one day, you know, refused to control what, what was going on inside him. And uh, so anger is it's just, it's like a horse. You need a bridle on that horse. You can't work cows successfully on a Greenboro course. I remember when we sold you what, cinnamon, you know. I, yeah, um, I never broke him because I didn't know how to do it. And I tried to get on him a time or two, and, boy, he, you could feel him just tighten up. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. Well, I don't have the insurance for this. <laughs> and um, so, you know, you, you don't want to you don't want to kill them. You don't want to destroy their speed or their strength, but you want their speed under your control. You want them to neck rain. You know, you want them to have common sense not to throw you off and, and hurt you. And um, so the energy of of the anger you want this control toward solving problems, not hurting people. All right? You want to uh, you want to direct this toward resolution of some kind of an issue that's going on that that you're familiar with, and so that's what anger's for. It it gets you go. It puts your hand to the plow. It solves a problem. It gets you off the couch. Uh, anger doesn't have to be explosive. It can be quiet. It can be determined. Uh, it doesn't have to have a face that's screwed up into a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just bite a hole in your throat. You don't have to do that. I mean, the person that is angry productively, Paul, be ye angry. All right, now, what kind of face does this person have? Be angry, sin not. Well, I think there are times when... When Jesus flipped over the tables, what kind of an expression do you think he had on his face? I think you could tell he was, he was upset. See, it, it is right to get angry at that which is wrong. Okay? It is not right to get angry at that which just simply annoys you. Because what annoys you may not necessarily be wrong. It just may be something that annoys you. And so you're going to have to be a person of discretion. Should I direct my anger at this, or are there other things more important, you know, that I need to, to take care of? Now, when you're angry, uh, a lot of people allow their anger to create more problems. You know, they'll take a, they'll take a little issue and blow it up. Now they've got a big issue plus a little issue. And then the other person blows up. And now you've got the little issue and your big issue and now their big issue. And so it just it escalates from, from that point. They solve nothing. And when the dust settles, you got more of a mess than you had before. Uh, and so, in other words, anger is often about my ego being offended or threatened. And I'm not going to let that happen. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I can do. You don't, you know, you heard it all, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Right, it is. Um, you know, when Jesus was just 
uh, assaulted, affronted almost daily. Um, he would answer calmly. And the Bible says, and they durst not ask him any more questions. He didn't throw rocks at them. You know, he didn't cuss them out. He just simply handled them with discretion, and discretion controlled the whole situation. Uh, now, when you're angry, let me give you some things not to do, okay? Number one, don't, don't cuss. See, don't use inappropriate language. Don't do that. Um, don't throw stuff. Now, these are deep theological things we're talking about. Don't hit anybody. Don't slap anybody. Um, don't drive like a maniac when you're, when you're angry. And I've seen people do that, just go nuts on the road. Uh, don't allow hate to find a place in your heart when you're angry. Don't plot evil. Don't fight. Don't hold a grudge. Now, you say, well, what do you do when you're angry? Number one, pray for discretion. You got a situation. You know when you're getting angry. How, let's open this up. How can you tell when you're getting angry? What are some of the symptoms that it's coming on and you know it's coming? Your blood pressure goes up, okay? You start to, you clench your teeth. Often when people are mad, they, they, you know, you can't even understand what they're saying because they're talking, you know. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of medical issues uh, are dealt with here. So pray for discretion. You know, you don't have to pray this big, long, our Heavenly Father, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Jeroboam and Rehoboam and all them boom boys, creator of heaven and you know, don't I would I wouldn't do that, you know. Um, I think you can do something like, uh, Lord, I don't I don't need to I don't need to say this, and I need your restraint right now. I mean, you can abbreviate your need to a few words, and um, so you uh, pray for discretion. Number two, identify the problem. Why are you mad? What's this all about anyway? Is this something that happened 40 years ago and you're not over it yet and everybody, you're just taking it out on everybody? I don't know how many times I've heard stuff like, well, my daddy never told me he loved me when I was a kid. Okay. I'm sorry about that, but I ain't your daddy and I love you. So get over yourself, all right? Don't drag everybody into your black hole. Don't do that, you know? Nobody deserves that. And so, why are you mad? Has, has right been violated, or is your ego being threatened? Or are you just being annoyed? What, which is it? Uh, and so, identify why you're angry. Number two, assemble some possible solutions. I could say this, I could do that. Uh, what are some things that would put this fire out? Besides throwing, throwing more fire on it. Number two... Or, or the next, apply the solution. You know, there are times when you get angry because you're wrong. You know, somebody's pointed it out, and you, you, you know you're wrong. What, what do you do with that? You know, you're right. Yeah, you just say, yeah, okay, you're right. And so you've got to, you know, just, just confess that. And so uh, apply the solution. Then work intelligently to solve the problem. You don't, you don't have to blow up. You just you don't have to do that. Now, I would also suggest that you memorize Ephesians 4.26. Right, let's say it all together. Be ye angry. Say it. Be ye angry and sin not. Okay. Be ye angry and sin not. Not. Now, if you want to modernize your own version here, get mad at the right things. Get angry at the right things. And what are the right things to be angry about? Whatever's wrong. Whatever's wrong. Now, I'm not talking about, well, I think it's wrong, but you, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about this opinionated stuff. I'm talking about scriptural principle. Anybody that violates 
clear teachings in the Scripture ought to anger you. That ought to anger you. Murder should anger you. Robbery, thievery, child abuse, all of that should anger us. Anytime that a biblical principle is violated, you have a right. Matter of fact, I think we have a responsibility to get angry about things that violate truth. But often, Christians are just kind of like, and they let it go. And the world looks at us and say, oh, I didn't know you thought that was okay. Well, I don't. Well, you didn't say anything. You don't, have to, you don't have to say something about everything. Somebody asked me one time, what do you think about that? And I said, yeah, there'll be days I won't even think about it. See, I've got limited shelf space in my mind. I can't put everything on the shelf and advertise. I can't do that. I don't want to do that. There are some things I just I don't care to spend a whole lot of energy and time considering i just I, you know I, we go to walmart go to the store and they've got these mullet wrapper things on there and uh you know you find oh my goodness somebody's having somebody else's baby some hollywood you know and i'm like really you know what sad is is apparently that stuff sells people are in um and so emotions are powerful forces, and, and all of them need to be used in appropriate fashion. And so know where your brakes are. We landed in Ireland in, in Shannon, and my heart had been kind of beating for a while because I was, I never driven over there. They drive dumb. And I was thinking, oh, my word, you know, the steering wheel, all that stuff's going to be on the right side of the vehicle. I just hope it's an automatic, you know, so I don't have to worry about this, too. Well, we get there, and it's a, it's a new van. I'm figuring, oh, well, it's a new van. It's got to be automatic. Oh, no. <laughs> it, was, it was more economical to do this. And so I'm, I'm having to clutch and shift with my left hand. And so I'm driving on the left side of the road. And those, I'm, I'm talking, I mean, just, you could reach out with your finger and clean a finger width worth off the truck or the bus going by you at 60 miles an hour. I'm telling you, and boy, they, they'd start coming and I could feel it and I just, I just kind of tense up. And uh, those roundabouts, it's like centrifugal force. You get caught in that thing. And you're hoping that Chelsea or somebody says, all right, you go out that way, and then you just look for a hole and sling out. Um, and, oh, my word, yeah. I, and so I, I just, I needed, I needed to just calm down. Fortunately, we had uh, somebody else that was willing to drive 95% of the time, and I was so thankful for that. But remember, remember this, anger won't, solve a problem if you just express it by venting or sulling so if i blow up that'll solve the problem no it might it might solve the problem of your marriage that just may be yeah that just might do it it might solve the problem of your job i've known folks get mad at their boss and blow up and lose their job yeah well they solve that problem you don't have that problem anymore um, and so you observe, you can observe uh, problem-solving skills. You know, when, when some, what did they do when they're upset? Um, remember, people are at stake here, okay? People are at stake. Relationships are at stake. Eternity is at stake here. Um, now, let me give you a simple little formula. When you feel anger brewing in your spirit, I'm going to share some things with you, and, and then I'm going to give you something to take home uh, that's a, a pretty cool little tool here. Number one, stop. Stop. What do you do when you stop? Uh, one of the most effective, and this is not just silliness, one of the most effective medical, psychological things that you can do is to slowly count to ten. You know what that does? That gives you at least 10 long seconds before you say or do anything. And sometimes that can be the critical period of time 
for you to get yourself under control. And uh, I, I have read, Dr. Haig has told me this, you're, to control your breathing is so important to calm you down, literally. Uh, your heart rate will slow down, your pulse slows down, your blood pressure slows down. And he will tell me, he said, now, Jim, when you breathe in, you, you don't breathe with your lungs. You breathe with your diaphragm, your abdomen. Breathe in as far as you can till your stomach touches your backbone. And then breathe out. Just push your stomach out till you look stupid, you know. Just push it out. Now, that takes a few seconds to do that. But it, it brings some, some control to your mind and, and what you're thinking. And so, first of all, stop, all right? Think. Think. Um, think this. What will happen if I do what I usually do? If I say what I usually say, um, how much cleanup am I going to have to do? How much would you forgive me for this? Am I going to be responsible for doing? Think. Discretion. Is it worth, is the, is the, the love bug on the wall really worth a shotgun shell? Is it really worth that? Well, I'll kill the love bug. Yes, you will. And you'll do $800 worth of damage to the wall that you got to fix as well. There's a, well, I want him dead. Is there another way to handle that? You know, I, I hate those little deals. Uh, I am, thank God forever they're gone. May and September are miserable months for me because I'm allergic to their splatter. And, I mean, apparently they got calendars in the grass that they read because on the last day of May, they disappeared. And so, you know, I appreciate their... Uh, their their prudence and getting gone when they're supposed to get gone but think all right stop first of all stop count 10 number two think number three ask stop think ask so what do you ask number one what are you really mad about who are you really mad about who is this really directed against well my boss at work got all over me for something and of course I can't do anything to him he's the boss but somebody is going to catch the brunt of this and it's going to be somebody that that won't do anything back to me and so you find some vulnerable little target you know spouse child come in the house kick the cat what's a cat got to do with it you know what I'm saying uh, and so just ask what am I really angry about what need in my life is not being met? Am I just being selfish? Is this just an adult temper tantrum? Is that what's going on here? I didn't get what I want, and so now I'm going to blow up about it. Is all of this noise just self-protection? Now, let's get specific, and we're going to go here shortly. I'm going to give you a copy of what is called the Holmes Ray Life Event Scale. I've got 15 copies of it right here. And I want you to follow the directions. They're very simple. I'm gonna, I'll tell you how to do this. And you can self-diagnose your potential for becoming extremely ill physically by what you're going to do. And I hope you'll take this home and do it. And here's what you – thank you, Jamie. For each event that applies – to you at this time of your life not a year ago but something going on right now uh, these gentlemen put this scale together and this is from the uh, journal of psychology by t holmes and r h ray and it's called the holmes ray life event scale and what you do they and, and please don't ask me how they came up with these numbers okay i just i just know they did and if you'll notice, they start out with 100 points, which is the maximum amount of stress slash anger. All right, that's what this is, is 
measuring. Death of a spouse is the greatest loss that a person can experience. All right? if, if that has happened to you and you're going through that now, you'd put 100 points over there. Just go down and read that. Divorce, marital separation, jail term, death of a family member, personal injury or illness, marriage, fired from your job. Uh, you go on. All right? There. At no, if you're going through that right now, right now. Because what we're trying to do is pinpoint the anger, uh, depression level that you're experiencing right now. And, I mean, it even go on the last page. Uh, change in eating habits vacation what yeah vacation <laughs> Christmas and, and there are just all kind of events here then what you do you add up all your numbers okay now look at the last page bottom paragraph if you score 300 or more you stand an almost 80 percent chance of getting very sick in the near future if your score is from 150 to 299, your chances of becoming ill are about 50%. 149 or less, your chances of becoming really sick are about 30%. Now, the higher your score is in this, the more you tend to react in an irritated, frustrated, angry, depressed manner. So if you've got a really high score, I would suggest you do some self-realization, some self-searching, get these numbers down. Um, because this is, uh, we can, look, look at what you can lose with one word. Look at what you can lose in one moment. You can lose a career. You can lose everything you've worked 40 years for can be destroyed in a moment of anger. And had you counted to 10, maybe 10 seconds is the difference between a continued successful career and absolute destruction. You know? Uh, so be ye angry, but sin not. Control it. Direct it. Yes, sir. Was that the last time he dunked at practice? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, um, the Bible is just such a brilliant document on 
how to live life. It's not just theological principles that we're to believe, you know. It's not just a museum of truth that we look at and, you know, we're all, oh, wow. Uh, this stuff is, it's usable, you know. It's food for the spirit, the mind, and uh, let, let's use that. Yes, ma'am. Right. You didn't approach somebody. Right. You know, you came and pointed to her and you were there. Right. Right. You can apply the grace on that stuff. You sure can. You can. I agree with you. I, I say something regularly that Stacy doesn't always agree with, um, but our suspicions of others are based on a knowledge of ourselves. And she says, no, my suspicions of you are based on a knowledge of you. <laughs> so she she reframes that. But uh, you, you remember the the, uh, the prodigal son, you know, coming back home, and uh, Daddy went out, and, boy, they had a party, and the older boy heard the party and he hadn't even seen his brother yet okay because the servant had to say well your your baby brother came home and they're giving a part da, da, da. and the older boy got mad and he said good night here i never left home you know i've stayed here and he never did this for me you know uh, my baby brother went out and spent all his money on on wild women and harlots how do you know that he hadn't even talked to his baby brother because if he had had the guts to leave home, that's exactly what he would have done with the money that he had. And uh, so, you know, the next time you feel this, this explosive volcano of emotion, uh, just step back, step back. It might be a love bug. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for blessing our lives. Thank you for safety in the air and on the highways. And, Lord, I'm grateful for those who have chosen to be here tonight. And I pray, Lord, that we would be agents of discretion in our culture and in our civilization. My, how this world needs people of discretion and judgment and wisdom. And I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to explode and blow up and act a fool and have to go back and sweep all those broken lives. I don't want to do that. Lord, I pray that... Uh, you bless us with a sense of when to get angry, about what, how much energy to put into that, uh, what target. And I pray that we would not be uh, guilty of, of misappropriated anger and getting angry at people that uh, are, are just vulnerable, that don't have anything to do with the situation. Thank you again for your goodness to us. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all have a great week. See you Sunday morning.